Greetings folks, and I hope you're all happy and healthy wherever you are in collecting land. And welcome back to the channel for another 1-6 scale unboxing and review. So, with Hot Toys release of their artisan take on Heath Ledger's Dark Knight Joker, I thought it was about time that their previous 2.0 DX11 Joker got the full Go Figure review treatment. After all, it was considered by many back in the day as a grail and pretty much the gold standard of Joker figures for a long time. So, usual format folks, box, accessories, uh, figure, and then winding the whole thing up with the usual showcase at the end. But before we dive in, a massive shout out to everyone who supported the channel, and please drop a like on this review and help other people find Go Figure. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon so you don't miss any of the good stuff coming up. And trust me, there's a hell of a lot of it. Uh, so I've got to say, before we kick off, that uh, Heath Ledger's Joker has to be quite probably the most, one of the most popular anyway, uh, of characters for figure manufacturers over the years. It seems like every company on the planet and his brother have tried their hand from Mego to Inar. There must have been thousands of takes on him. Uh, so from the off, I'm going to say that this is not a comparison video. Video, uh, as uh, uh, believe it or not, um, very much to my shame, this is the only Joker figure in one six scale that I own. Well, Heath Ledger Joker, anyway. Uh, hell, I don't even own the original Hot Toys uh, DX11 figure, so it's a standalone review of the DX11 2.0 and nothing else. But enough of my ramblings onto this box, and, and uh, the eagle eye amongst you will have noticed it is not on the turntable because it's uh, it's back in the day when Hot Toys used to make uh, proper DX boxes, uh, and my turntable simply won't cope with something this size and this weight. But yeah. Uh, People who've been collecting a while will recognize these boxes and at the risk of sounding like an old man reminiscing, which is probably what I am, uh, is uh, I do love these, uh, these original DX boxes. Uh, they, they smack of, uh, of premium quality uh, and you really felt like you were getting uh, something for your money, some value for your money when you, uh, when you unbox one of these things. Today, the card is a lot thinner, the boxes are a lot, they, they still look nice, but uh, yeah, whether it's down to shipping costs, saving on shipping costs and saving or saving on manufacturing costs. I think it's uh, at the end of the day, I think we've seen the disappearance of these boxes simply down to money and nothing else. But uh, that's enough of those ramblings as well. Let's take a look at it. Very, very simple, huge box it is too. Uh, really, really thick, high quality card. Uh, it's got that magnetic clasp that we uh, that we saw with uh, DX uh, figures back in the day. This lovely purple hue, Joker purple hue, uh, relatively simple design. You've just got the uh, the Joker playing card symbol on the front there, um, the Batman uh, uh, symbol there, and it says the Joker 2.0, DX11, uh, and the usual bits and pieces at the bottom, Hot Toys uh, Movie Masterpiece DX, and the, uh, the DC symbol. Flip it around to the side, nothing really to see here. Uh, it's a huge box, this, so if it doesn't all fit in shot, I apologize. <laughs> it says Joker 2.0 on the side there, DX11. Uh, nothing on the right hand side there. Uh, uh, around the back you have got all the usual warnings and credits and so on. Uh, don't piss this figure off uh, or it might take you seriously. Um, on the bottom, let's have a look. Uh, nothing other than that lovely purple hue and regulars to the channel will know my love affair with purple. It's my third favourite colour along with black and white and I know black and white aren't technically colours. So yeah, magnetic clasp. Uh, this whole thing opens up and if I can keep all this in shot it'll be nothing short of a miracle. A little bit of wear and tear on this box as uh, I've had this quite some time now. Got it when it was originally released. So uh, if we can get all this in shot you can just see how uh, uh, although it's not it's not overdone, uh, Hot Toys really just gave it that that quality premium edge on the inside as well. You've got sort of ha 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 written all over on the inside in this uh, high gloss purple lettering. Why so serious in the centre there? Joker 2.0 again. And as with the the vast majority of the DX figures that came out around that time. Hot Toys included a little something special on the uh, on this foam inlay card with this little tab that you pull out. Uh, and uh, this time round, it's that Joker playing card with a large safety pin through it. And it says, uh, will the real Batman please stand up? Lovely little touch there. As I said at the top, uh, this packaging just felt so much better back in the day, so much more premium. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Obviously, once you... Uh, 
remove that uh, that foam inlay all the uh, all the bits and pieces are underneath there including the figure and then the stand below that and in a foam tray rather than a plastic clamshell once again really nice touch but uh, not Obviously no figure in there now, as it's not new to me, but uh, yeah, that is the wonderful box. So, without further ado, let's dive down onto the table and have a look at all the accessories that come with your Joker figure. Okay folks, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your DX Joker figure version 2.0. And I'm going to have to be really careful in this review not to keep rambling, reminiscing. Um, this is back in the day when you got stuff with a DX release uh, and they really, really have gone to town here, Hot Toys. I'm gonna to try and make this as brief as possible because there is simply so much stuff that comes with this figure. It is absolutely phenomenal, but we'll start with the, well, actually, no, we won't start with the hands. We'll make it a, a, a break from the norm. We will uh, we'll go for some of the bigger stuff and get it out of the way simply because I can barely get all this stuff into shot. So your figure comes with a, a set of instructions uh, and as always, as regulars to the channel will know, these uh, instructions have remained unopened all these years. Uh, yeah, I do that bloke thing. Uh, grab the figure, start mucking around with it, and ignore the instructions completely. Uh, but yeah, I'm assuming it covers things like swapping out the uh, the, the, the head and the hands and, and all the other bits and pieces and uh, putting this diorama backdrop together and so on. Uh, but yeah, they remain unopened. Um, these strips of Velcro in the uh, in the instructions here are actually to be used with the backdrop diorama. We'll cover that, but uh, yeah, never been out of the bag. So we'll get those to one side. Uh, what else do you get? Big stuff. Um, the table. The table from the uh, interrogation room sequence. We'll take a quick look at that. Now, this is all one piece of sculpted plastic uh, and it's uh, simply a silver painted plastic table. But um, it's the detailing here that really sets this apart. Um, the uh, well, What Hot Toys have done here is they've actually weathered this table and if you look at if the light will catch this you've got scratches on the surface there, uh, there's weathering, it's been dirtied up um, on the uh, on the end of the legs where the legs meet the floor they've been dirtied up and it's just uh, um, it's just not perfect which is absolutely spot on I think. I think the fact that they weathered this uh, and went to that level uh, of detail uh, to make it look used is absolutely great. And the same applies with the chair. You, it comes with the interrogation room chair as well, and that's received the same treatment. Once again, it's all sculpted plastic, uh, but the uh, seat of the chair has been weathered, the back of the chair has been weathered. If I can get this into shot, you can see there's scuffs, there's dirt, there's dinks, uh, there's wear at the end of the legs, and the whole thing has just been uh, uh, has been made to look imperfect and not new, which, uh, which is a great touch there. So yeah, you get uh, both the chair and the table. While we're on the table probably a good idea to actually have a quick look at this is the table lamp that you see in the interrogation scene uh, now hot toys have done a really nice job with this as well the stems here on this uh, on this lamp are metal uh, and it's got three joints uh, which all function uh, and uh, you've got a, a, a bulb that's been sculpted in there and painted white. Uh, the, uh, the the head of the lamp itself is plastic, uh, as is the base. But the as I say, the stems are, are made out of metal, so they're nice and secure. And they've got a magnet on the bottom. And the reason for that magnet is, and I shall bring this table back in and see if we can't place this uh, around the other the other accessories. There is a magnet underneath the table. Uh, whereabouts is it? There it is. Uh, so that this thing won't get knocked over and it will stay securely on the table. And also as well, as you've probably seen, there's a little wire that comes off the end there with a uh, plastic section on the end. And if I actually just turn this table over, you'll be able to see there's a little slot there, a little, little hole where you can actually plug the, the lamp in so you haven't got that wire trailing. So yeah, you plonk your lamp on there, then uh, take that wire, find the hole underneath and you can uh, plug it in and it conceals the wire uh, and so it doesn't get in the way in your display. Lovely touch. Also, while we're on the, uh, we'll get that lamp out of the way as well. Uh, while we're on this uh, this rather nice table, there is a tiny, tiny little hole there, and I have knocked something over, which is to be expected when you're dealing with this many accessories. Um, yeah, tiny little hole drilled into the uh, into the table itself, and that's for the pencil accessory, which uh, 
which <laughs> is just really, really small and really, really well done. Uh, it's simply a pencil in one six scale, and it will actually slot into that uh, into that little hole there. So if you're wanting to uh, replicate uh, that sequence that we all know and love, you can do that as well. So uh, another great touch there. So we'll put the pencil and the table to one side without knocking anything over. Uh, what else? Uh, let's crack on with the hands, actually. Let's get the hands out of the way. Now, there are one, two, three, four pairs of gloved hands and five pairs, sorry, six pairs of, of gloved hands uh, and three pairs of ungloved hands. Uh, now, I'm, I, I'm getting that right. Hang on a second. Bear with me. That's one, two, three, four pairs of gloved hands, eight gloved hands in total, uh, and one, two, three, six ungloved hands, three pairs in total. Uh, <laughs> I'm practice my basic mathematics. Um, we'll grab a couple at random to see what they're like. We'll start with the gloved hands, all manner of, uh, of, uh, of sort of uh, styles of gloved of handy you've got gripping hands you've got pointing hands uh, and uh, as a wise man once said especially with, with with figures like this it's it's all about the expression in the eyes and the hands that really really make a good action figure uh, and uh, i think uh, hot toys uh, for the age of this figure have done a phenomenal job here the color is absolutely on point uh, the uh, they've sculpted in stitch work there uh, the cuff of the gloves has been you know, sculpted well too with that stitch work in there. Uh, the colour looks absolutely screen accurate to me. Uh, let's do the flexibility test. Yeah, these are a medium to soft, which is good to see. So uh, hopefully no issues when swapping them out and no issues with gripping accessories. So yeah, you've got all manner of hands going on here. This, uh, this really expressive hand uh, can be expressing all kinds of things from... Uh, uh, amusement to uh, uh, um, fear and all points in between so uh, yeah uh, and as I say gripping hands going on and they're, they're all of, of the same sort of high quality as sculpt and paint applications so we will put those to one side uh, let's have a quick look at the ungloved hands uh, now the great thing about these hands uh, is it's just how, uh, it's the paint applications really. The sculpt is, is not the best I've seen, although there's some creasing in the palms there and, and the, uh, the fingernails are done really well. What really I think uh, makes these, uh, these hands stand out is the paint applications to dirty them up. They really do look screen accurate. There's a reddening on the knuckles there. There's sort of dirt, uh, purpley colored dirt. It looks like remnants of perhaps makeup. His makeup is on there. The, the fingernails are dirty at the cuticles. Uh, the palms of the hands are dirty, the ends of the fingers are dirtied up uh, and it's just the paint applications on these I think that really really sets these aside and uh, once again you've got all manner of expressing expressive hands you've got a pointing finger there and you can see the vein work in the back uh, you've got uh, uh, a sort of a neutral uh, flat palmed hand as well and all of them uh, have that same level of uh, sculpt and, and, and paint application, which is uh, really, really nice to see. And on a figure this old, uh, they really have gone to town here. Uh, and you know me and my hands, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get off these hands. <laughs> I think they're phenomenal. Paint application's brilliant. So that's the ungloved hands. We'll pop those to one side. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll remove this chair from shot as well, because we've already covered that. Make a bit of space. Now we can breathe a little bit. Let's take a look at his weapons now. Um, comes with an array of knives. Uh, there is the signature knife, which is a sort of sliding lock knife. This, uh, it's all one piece of sculpted plastic. There is some dry brushing on there to give it that metallic look and dirtied up uh, a little bit. Uh, and you simply, and it functions as well, you simply slide it on the side there and that uh, retractable blade comes out with that uh, uh, hollow section in the center there. Silver paint application, screen accurate, uh, and uh, just really well done. That's knife number one. Knife number two is the butterfly knife, fully functioning butterfly knife this, which is uh, nice to see, all one piece of sculpt of plastic. Nice sculpt, nice paint applications, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, really, really well done. Uh, and finally in the knife complement is the potato peeler. Uh, this always makes me smile. I think, and correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, the only time we see the potato peeler knife is when uh, uh, the Joker gets himself arrested and, and, they're, and they're removing all the knives from his pockets. Uh, and a potato peeler makes the appearance and is, is dumped with all the other knives. So yeah, you get the potato peeler as well. 
So put that to one side, boot knives. Now, these actually attach to the figure, and we'll take a look at that when we bring the figure out. I think these are metal, yeah, these are metal, made of metal, and there's a little uh, section here which slots into the end of his, uh, his shoes, uh, and uh, yeah, just as very, very simple, uh, but the right shape, uh, and nice to see they're being made out of metal. These wouldn't last two minutes if they were made out of plastic. So yeah, two of those for the ends of his shoes. Uh, the uh, the handgun with the extended magazine, uh, once again, screen accurate. Uh, looks like, a, I'm not sure what type of gun this is. It's a uh, <laughs> regular city channel. Well, no, I'm trying to educate myself regarding firearms. Um, could this be a Glock 9mm? I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's nicely sculpted. That extended ball magazine comes out. And there are sculpted bullets in the end there. Paint applications are good. I believe there's a cocking action on here. There is, and it's a spring-loaded cocking action, which is uh, a nice little touch. Uh, but yeah, screen accurate, great sculpt, and a very good paint application, so that's the handgun. Fair to note at this point as well, he does come with a shotgun. Unfortunately, Mr. Go Figure, who has many figures, uh, seems to have mislaid the shotgun uh, temporarily. Apologies for that. Uh, but trust me, uh, it is screen accurate. It's all one piece of plastic. Uh, I will be searching high and low uh, <laughs> following this review to find it. Uh, but it will no doubt have got mixed up with one of the many, many other bags of accessories that I have for my figures. But yeah, trust me, uh, screen accurate and very nice. And you also get this machine gun as well. Uh, which he uses and uh, all one piece of sculpted plastic very nicely done um, it's, it's very simple uh, not a lot to write home uh, here about but uh, yeah there's some silver dry brushing on there to give it that uh, 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 give it that extra depth uh, and uh, yeah is what it says on the tin it's uh, uh, his submachine gun or machine gun whichever it might be, uh, and the handle folds away as well. That is very, that is quite delicate, and I would say, you know, if, you, if you've got this figure, you probably already know this, but if you are thinking of picking this one up over the artisan piece, uh, the uh, yeah, that is quite delicate. Those hinges are delicate, so I would say exercise caution there. So that's the machine gun. What else do you get? A pair of plastic handcuffs, once again, for the, uh, the interrogation room sequence. Uh, they are functioning handcuffs. Uh, although they are plastic uh, and uh, this, they, they slot away like that. Just a simple uh, plastic sculpt with the silver paint application, but they look effective. I think that chain connecting them is actually metal. Yeah, that's cold to the touch. So yeah, metal chain connecting them, but that's your handcuffs. Uh, for, uh, you also get a huge stack of cash. Now I'm not gonna attempt to pick all of these, these, uh, these notes up here because as regulars know, I have sausage fingers and we will lose them. Uh, but you get a, a, a crackingly large stack of uh, dollar bills here. Uh, now, um, the, uh, the, the actual design, I'll try and get this into camera here so the, uh, see if you can see this. Um, the actual makeup, uh, and I believe it's on Mr. Washington there, on Mr. George Washington, is uh, he's got the eye makeup and the, uh, and the mouth makeup, the lipstick. Uh, from of the Joker if the camera's catching that. So a nice little touch that. Uh, but yeah, you get a whole mess of these uh, these dollar bills. If I had one complaint, I would say it would nice to have been you know, it would be nice to see these double sided. They're only single sided, but uh, that's probably me being pedantic. Uh, so yeah, a mass of dollar bills. Uh, we'll get those to one side. Also comes with a, a set of Joker playing cards. Now obviously all of these are uh, Joker cards. There are they're, they're no there's no normal uh, cards in here, and they're just a, a wide variety of different styles of Joker cards. So you can have him holding one, and you can have them lying around in the display. You can do with them as you will, but yeah, nice little touch. They're on this sort of very thick laminated card, and they've got a nice shine to them as well. So uh, they feel like authentic playing cards. So yeah, and there's all kinds of different designs going on in there. So yeah, those are the Joker cards. Uh, Let's take a look at the base. Uh, now, this is, <laughs> hey, regulars to the channel will also know my feelings on this base. Uh, it's that good. Hot Toys are continuing to use it, but uh, been repurposed more times than something that's been repurposed a lot of times. But yeah, I think for back in the day, this was a cracking base and still holds up today. I love this, uh, uh, it's all it's all sculpted plastic, obviously, but I love this, this top section here, which is uh, designed to look like corrugated uh, metal try and get this all into shot. There's rust on there. Uh, there's the bat symbol. It says the Dark Knight. 
light and then there's rust around the edges there uh, on the uh, on the bottom you've got uh, the uh, battery compartment small Phillips head screwdriver remove that pop in three AAA batteries and you've got access to the light up feature um, and the light up feature still works on here by some miracle and they are very bright I'll try not to point these in directly into the camera they still work still super bright you've got these posable spotlights in the uh, uh, in, in either edge there so if you're wanting to illuminate the figure in your display you can do so so yeah uh, Metal nameplate on the front, no plastic here, laser etch with the Joker DX, uh, that uh, sort of angular crotch grabber that we've sort of come to know and love with these, this particular style of base. I think back in the day, this base was really, really uh, groundbreaking. Uh, I, I, I would just like to see Hot Toys, if they are going to repurpose it in uh, 2024, please take out these, uh, these lights uh, and, and uh, yeah, remove the uh, battery compartment at the bottom. It just makes, you, makes it feel like what it is. Uh, you're getting something old and repurposed rather than something new. Uh, and uh, when you're spending that kind of money on a figure, uh, you want something new. So, yeah, but I still do love this base. Love the purple. Uh, love the, uh, the corrugated metal section. Light-up feature is great, even though I don't use it. So that's the stand. I'll pop that to one side. Um, and f not finally, because we've got the backdrop to look at, you also, with this, uh, with this DX version, you get two head sculpts now. We'll take a look at the other head sculpt when we bring the figure out. Uh, but this is the uh, the swap out head sculpt. This is the laughing head sculpt with the eyes closed. Uh, the, uh, the 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 other head sculpt has the purse system. Um, this one doesn't, obviously, because it's got it, it's got eyes closed. But uh, let's get this close into camera and uh, and. and and have a look now i'm going to say from uh, from the get go here uh i have encountered uh, i have watched i have heard numerous conversations videos where the where this character literally has got has been gone into in my new shy from the hair color and style to the makeup and skin texture and coloring uh, and everything has, uh, from his outfit to his face, has been dissected down to almost subatomic level uh, by collectors in an attempt to, to, to get to perfection. I'm not going to do that. Um, I think this is a cracking head sculpt. I really do. I think today, even, what is it, 12, 13, 14 years down the line, I still think this holds up. Uh, I think it, it's absolutely on point uh, and perfect for the... Uh, uh, the interrogation room sequence um, the hair is really really nicely done you've got that uh, that shade of green there but there's also browns in there it's muddied up it's not consistent which is in keeping with the character I love how the uh, the face paint is starting to wear off which is right in the interrogation room scene some of it's been uh, some of it's coming away it's not the same with the other head sculpt we'll take a look at I think uh, the, the creases in his face the makeup the smudged black makeup around the eyes uh, I think the teeth are really nicely sculpted. That tongue is well done and wet look. And it's got that feel about it, this head sculpt. That, um, uh, and, and we know that um, Heath Ledger actually put some... Uh, oh, I forgot what it was that he put in his mouth in order to... Uh, it, it, it meant that it affected his speech because he wanted it to do that. But it also meant he kept licking his lips. And when he laughed and smiled, these things rode up in his cheeks, which uh, as, as did the, uh, the scar makeup which gave it this sort of uh, slightly distorted lower face. And I think Hot Toys have caught that really well there. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the scarring is really nicely done. The lines on the face are really nicely done. Uh, the furrows in the eyebrows and the makeup are all really, really well done. Uh, I think it's a cracking head sculpt, I really do. Um, yeah, I think it's totally on point. So uh, yeah, that's the laughing head sculpt. Uh, we'll pop that to one side and finally uh, now we've got some space we'll take a look at this diorama base I'm not sure how we're going to get all this thing in shot but it comes in three pieces uh, this backdrop display uh, and the two walls uh, one for either side of the of your replicated cell will fit into fit into a detolf uh, super thick card really high quality and it's got this brickwork and then you've got this plastic section to replicate the two-way mirror uh, these sections along the side here denote where you put the Velcro uh, and what I will do actually is at this point is I will lift the camera up ever so slightly and I'll show you how this whole thing uh, works once you put it together. Uh, if we can, um, just I'll just move these other lights out of, out of shot so that they're not distracting us. 
they're, they're, they're designed for when we're looking at the accessories so we've got enough light on them just kill those uh, and lift this whole bring this whole all up now essentially what you've got as i said before is the interrogation room the two walls uh velcro to the back like that and uh, whoops I and mean, that nearly went uh, let's catch that i don't know why that fell over uh, but yeah, once they're velcroed in place, they're pretty much secure. So what you can do is actually replicate with your Batman figure and your Joker figure, the interrogation room scene, and you can really have uh, a field day posing here. You can go for anything you want. Uh, and I have seen numerous uh, collectors and photographers and uh, on social media who've used this backdrop really, really well. I, I included the Catwoman uh, figure in it as well. Uh, so yeah, it's a great inclusion. Um, I don't use it in the display simply because of the, the footprint it takes up, but I think I may, for the very first time when we get to the showcase section, be breaking this thing out so we can see how it looks with, uh, uh, with the figures in it. So there you have it. That's all the accessories. So without further ado, let's bring out the Joker himself. Let's get him onto that stand, onto the turntable. Find out if the years are kind to him. Find out if he stood the test of time. Okay, folks, so here he is. It's the DX11 version 2.0, also known as Heath Ledger, also known as the Joker from The Dark Knight. Uh, onto the stand, onto the turntable. Um, obviously, I can't give first impressions on this figure, as always. This is a retro review. I've had it in the collection since its release. Uh, but uh, as always, uh, getting him out of the detolf and getting him getting up close and personal with him again for these reviews is always a pleasure. And I still think this is a very, very impressive figure even today. The proportions look right. Um, the outfit looks on point to me and screen accurate. The head sculpt, well, we'll come to that. But uh, for, uh, as, an, as a first impression, in inverted commas, is very, very good. Just overall, I think the package is is exceptional um has he stood the test of time well let's find out let's uh, have a look at the details let's stop him from spinning and do as we always do start at the bottom and work our way up uh but yeah uh, straight away i mean he has been done by so many different companies so many different ways uh that uh uh, it's difficult to, uh, uh, to to actually keep up with the amount of uh, versions of this particular figure, but we're uh, let's get close up with this this particular take on him, and we'll start with the feet. I couldn't resist putting him in a pose and adding a few of the accessories, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll start with these shoes now. These shoes, oh, the the debates that have gone on have gone on with these shoes. These are. And to me, look slightly oversized, I've got to be honest. Uh, they look more like clown shoes. Uh, and uh, it, it, it is, uh, I don't think they're 100% screen accurate, I'll be honest. I think they're too long. Uh, now, the debate whether they were actually leather, whether they were brush suede, uh, continues. Um, were, were they a slightly green colour? Were they more of this sort of tan colour? I'm not going to enter into that argument. Uh, I think they look screen accurate other than the length. I think, yeah, uh, the, the length is way too long there, I think. Uh, but uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, but the stitch work is nice here. I believe these shoes, uh, and I don't think they're sculpted plastic, and correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, but they feel like they might actually be leather uh, or pleather. Uh, but uh, the stitch work is really, really nice on there. Uh, they've got real laces. Uh, there's some dirtying up at the front there. Uh, they most certainly have a leather feel to them. Um, no detailing on the soles, unfortunately. However, uh, pegged straight into the leg. Uh, and what you've got underneath there is the uh, now infamous Joker socks with the orange, blue, green and purple pattern. Uh, which is nice to see. Uh, so yeah, if those uh, trousers ride up, they reveal the authentic socks. Uh, let's work our way up to these pants now. The, the uh, blue pants with the uh, pinstripe in them, uh, these are a cotton material. Uh, they feel nice to the touch. They fall right, they look right. That pinstripe, um, is it 100% screen accurate? I Pretty close, pretty close. It wasn't a particularly thin pinstripe. It was, uh, 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 it was, it was quite narrow, like we see here. The uh, the stitch work on here is good uh, in the leg area, running the uh, the length of the leg. If the uh, light will catch that. However, the, the stitch work in the crotch area there perhaps leaves a little bit to be desired. 
uh, particularly in the lower section of the crotch area, uh, looks a bit off. Uh, you've got the uh, the gold chain, and I shall just, in actual fact, let's uh, let's get his arms uh, akimbo here so we can see this. You've got the gold chain that runs into his pocket, which is once again screen accurate. That's made out of metal, which is nice to see. Uh, we'll bring this other arm out of the way. This uh, this particular piece as well, I have to say, is a dust and dirt magnet, uh, simply because of the nature of the coat. But uh, yeah, working your way up, you've got the green waistcoat. Uh, the shade looks pretty much on point to me. Uh, the uh, um, the stitch work is really, really nice. Once again, it's made out of a cotton material, high quality. Uh, you've got functioning pockets there in that waistcoat, which is nice to see. It, it bunches up a little bit around the neck area there, uh, but uh, uh, that, that's simply because I'm, uh, I, I've got all three layers on here. Uh, we'll, you'll see him minus jacket and coat when we uh, zip over to the showcase section. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the jacket underneath now. Uh, as I say, you'll see him without this coat, so you get a better look at that in the showcase. But the jacket is really nicely tailored. It's this grey colour, which is absolutely on point. Um, the lining is that vibrant orange. Once again, I think this is a man-made fibre here. I think we're looking at a nylon, something similar. And it matches the uh, uh, the lining of the of the coat itself. Going up, <laughs> working our way up, the shirt itself looks uh, screen accurate to me with that design, uh, as does the tie uh, with the pattern on it. And the pattern is very similar to the uh, to the sock pattern, but slightly different colours and smaller. Uh, and overall, yeah, the materials are nice. The uh, stitch work is really, really good. Uh, let's take a look at this coat now. Much has been said about this coat, uh, and, and I'm sure much will be said in the future about future coats on uh, uh, on six scale figures of the Joker. Is it the right shade? First of all, um, and I revisited the film uh, very recently prior to doing this review, uh, and I think it is a tad too vibrant. I think the, the purple is slightly too loud. Um, it's it's not as loud as some uh, figures that I've seen. Uh, probably the uh, one that springs to mind is the Hot Toys quarter scale uh, version of this particular character, where it really is. It's you need sunglasses with that that one. Uh, but I still think this is a, a just a shade too bright uh, and a bit, bit too purple. Um, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't destroy the figure for me. I think it still works. Um, the material itself, once again, that's been a, 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 a have been examined at a subatomic level um, and it's, it's sort of flannel material now there are arguments that this this isn't the correct material that it was a different type of material i think the material's fine um, it works for me uh, it falls well uh, the cut is right the stitch work is very very good we'll bring it around the back here uh, it's got those th uh, those two flaps at the back there which once again are very accurate if you're seeing any 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 marks on here this is solely down to uh, this being a complete dust and dirt magnet as soon as I took it out of the detolf it, 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 it literally uh, attracts uh, the tiniest fleck I think it's the nature of this uh, of this material uh, this brushed material but overall I think the the cut is uh, uh, is on point the stitch work is on point color slightly off um, the material might not be 100% accurate, but it's fine by me. It falls right. Uh, herein lies one of the age issues with this figure. And I'll just lower these arms down so that you can see. Now, these lapels, uh, although they are 100% screen accurate, uh, were attached by magnets. Now, as you can see, over the, uh, so the they sort of sat in place, affixed to the, uh, the shoulder area there by magnets. Unfortunately, time hasn't been kind to these. And as you can see, one of them's dropped off here. And it looks like one of them sort of uh, uh, just detached itself. I haven't bothered replacing these uh, because uh, it doesn't really impact the figure that much. Uh, the figure itself, uh, uh, the, the lines are still maintained in the coat there. Uh, so the, I, I've, it's never really uh, been something that I've uh, thought about replacing. It just does leave a little bit of an ugly mark if, uh, if those... Uh, uh, those those lapels ride up, but uh, not an issue. That's m more age than anything else. Uh, so articulation, pretty much hot toy standards on articulation. Uh, you've got a double bend at the knee, the leg goes all the way back up. 
you're a little bit limited in the uh, in the waist area but that's uh, down to the clothing but there is a fair amount of give there you'll get a decent amount of twist uh, I believe the arms themselves I've got a double yeah there's a double bend at the arm there so the arms will pretty much come up to face height uh, butterfly joint in the shoulder so you've got a full range of motion there a um, little bit restricted as I say by the, simply the fact that he's got to, he's got four layers on uh, that's always going to restrict it a little bit but overall I think uh, uh, the the clothing the proportions the body is is good uh, over the years yeah um, it's got a little bit loose in the leg area uh, the, 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 particularly this uh, this right leg uh, has lost a little bit of uh, stiffness at the knee but once again that's an age thing that's not a criticism that's uh, that's to be expected with uh, with action figures this old so the second of the two head sculpts. Now I'm going to try and drop this. So I'm going to move the camera back ever so slightly and drop this, uh, drop this down the gap here and see if we can't get the camera in as close as possible. Now, this is my preferred head sculpt. I'm going to, I'll have to say from the get go here. I think this uh, uh, is it, it's down to the fact that it's it's got the purse system as well, which really really helps. But uh, yeah, um, where to begin with this head sculpt? Full makeup there. The eye makeup I think is absolutely on point. Uh, as is the uh, the lip area there. The, the sculpt is is very very good indeed. Is it a hundred percent? No. Uh, but what head sculpt is? Is it is it ninety percent? Absolutely. Is it ninety five percent? Probably. Um, I still think it is a very very good likeness of uh, of Heath Ledger as the Joker today. Um, the sculpt is really good. You've got those uh, those those wrinkles in the forehead there. The eye makeup is really is done really well, and it's not asymmetrical. You've got more run on one side than you have on the other. Um, the the makeup uh, of the scar and the sculpting of that scar really nicely done with some running down onto the chin there. You've got uh, and I'll lift his head up at this point. Uh, the uh, as you can see, the makeup comes down into the neck area, but then very quickly uh, blends in with normal. Uh, flesh tones the hair now as I said much debate about this hair very similar to the uh, the laughing head sculpt I think they've, they've done a really really good job here in actual fact I will bring the laughing head sculpt in at this point uh, because it pretty much looks identical uh, although the sculpt is different the, uh, the uh, for the face I think the hair is almost identical there pretty much uh, but yeah it's that uh, uh, you've got those shades of green in there individual strands have been picked out then when you get towards the uh, uh, the, the temple area there uh, it gets a little darker that more muddied brown look uh, the makeup is continued into the ear section and you've and you've also got this little, ever so slight strip in the hairline there where that white makeup hasn't gone all the way and I think that really really sets that head sculpt off uh, and is accurate as well uh, I like how the hair falls to one side. Uh, it's a hard plastic. There's no so there's no movement in this hair. But overall, I think yeah, for a for a 12, 13 year old head sculpt, I think this really really stands up very very well. Um, the purse system, the independent eye moving system. Now what you do is, and if I can get this, uh, I have to move the camera back a little bit, a little bit further, so we can drop his legs down here. Uh, what you've got is the usual story here with a magnetic section on the back of the head. And before we move, actually, it's fair to say that's the join line there. And now I think the Joker's got the perfect hair here for concealing that uh, that that join line uh, because it's so straggly, because it's so messy. Uh, and so when you take this uh, this section off here. Um, it's very difficult to actually see where that join is unless you're looking for it but magnetically clasped to the back of the head one joystick in the center there and you can really go to town with moving those eyes around um, I tend to have them looking down or off to one angle because I think that gives him a particularly menacing air uh, and when you combine it with them um, this is something that I, I, I think is really good with this uh, uh, this head sculpt it's a fixed neck head sculpt you can actually drop it forward like that which really gives and i'll put the back of the, he the head on at this point as well because it uh, it helps to accentuate the effect it just snaps back on like that uh, with it being a fixed fixed neck head sculpt, you can drop the neck down and it just accentuates that stoop that uh, that heath ledger had when he played the joker he, he was never it felt like he was never stood 100 percent upright that he was he was stooping over 
all the time and it really captures that well so yeah that's the head sculpt the second of the head sculpts or the first of the head sculpts depending on uh, which you think is the best so let's get him back on the stand uh, and go in for final thoughts on this guy uh, let's get him spinning again and uh, yeah so have the years been kind to this figure well, for me, yes, they have. That's a resounding yes. It's, uh, it's still a very, very good figure, in my opinion. Has it been bettered? Probably. Um, I mean, we've had versions from it in art. We've had versions from a variety of companies. Um, is, does it still stand up today? Yeah, absolutely. I think as, uh, as a representation of, uh, of Heath Ledger, uh, in the Dark Knight, I think it is a fantastic piece of work. I think as well, if we use the lens of, uh, of hindsight, I think back in the day when this was released, I think it would have been a phenomenal piece. Uh, taking this guy out of the box uh, 12, 11, 12 years ago, you would have been blown away. I know I was. Has it been better though? Yes, it has. But I think it still stands up as a really, really, really good representation of Heath Ledger as the Joker. So the difficult part, a score out of 10, and this is always, oh, these are, this is always difficult because with the benefit of hindsight, um, had I re been running a channel 11, 12 years ago, I would have given this a straight 10. Uh, however, um, with my experience and knowledge in collecting now and, uh, and, and other factors as well, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not going to be a 10. Uh, I think there are a few issues here. Uh, the colour of that coat, for example, is slightly off. Those feet, and that's probably my biggest bugbear, those feet are way too big. Um, from a distance, it's not an issue, but you get up close and they really do look huge uh, and uh, quite comical and, and really out of proportion. So, yeah, uh, the, uh, the those will... We I'm going to knock points off for that. Um, the coat itself perhaps could have been done ever so slightly better. Those magnets weren't a great idea and the shade is slightly off. Perhaps the material isn't exactly uh, what it should be. Uh, but I think the head sculpts are a definite 9 out of 10, both of them. Uh, by today's standards, I still think they're a 9, maybe an 8, 9 out of 10. Uh, I think the accessories are fantastic. The base is wonderful. I think everything that comes with the, with this particular piece um, uh, is a testament to uh, the good old days of uh, Hot Toys DX figures. So I'm not going to I'm not going to score it uh, as if uh, as if it's brand new figure and it's just landed. I'm going to I'm going to score this. Um, uh, as, as if it was made yesterday. I think that's the best way to do it. And if it was made yesterday and given to me as a as a Joker figure, now I would give it an eight. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely give it an eight. Uh, and I think that's what, uh, maybe an 8.5 on a good day. Uh, it does have some niggles, but on the whole, um, I think it's a testament to how good this figure is that I have yet to feel the urge to, to purchase another 1.6 scale Heath Ledger Joker for the collection. Uh, this has sufficed all these years. That may change. Uh, I was tempted by Inart, uh, but didn't jump in. Uh, I'm I'm sort of holding back on the Hot Toys Artisan piece to wait and see what the uh, what the reception is like on that. But so far, this figure has served me well, and I'm more than happy with it. So there you have it. That is the Joker, uh, the uh, DX11 version 2.0 by Hot Toys. Do you have this in your collection? Uh, is it a figure you have? Uh, are you getting the new Artisan version? Do you have the in-art version or any other version for that matter? What's your take on, uh, on the character? What's your take on the film? What's your take on Hot Toys? Please drop a comment in the comment section below. Nothing is off menu and I would be fascinated to hear from you. Uh, so I suppose all it remains for me to say is a massive thank you for watching. Please, as I mentioned at the top there, mash that subscribe button and bell notification icon. We have lots more stuff coming up on the channel. We have figures from InArt, figures from Hot Toys, figures from Premier Toys, Present Toys, Susu Toys. We have quarter scale, six scale statues, action figures. I could go on. The list is endless, but uh, yeah. Uh, be sure to uh, uh, hit that bell notification icon so you're not missing any of the good stuff. So I suppose all it remains for me to say uh, from Mr. Heath Ledger, uh, the Joker himself, uh, and from me, take care of yourselves. Happy collecting, and it's over to the showcase.